central bankers concerned over rising wage trends. So in other <laughs> words, if, if the average person is, is making more and more money, oh no, the bankers are freaking out. Oh, we can't have that. That's right. going to be bad for the economy. I mean, well, it, think about it. Their job is to steal from the average person and give it to the wealthy. And if the average person keeps up with everything, I mean, that just means that they got to work harder to steal more. It's time once again for the weekly wrap up. And I've got Alan Hibbard with me once again. Alan, what have you got for me? Hey, Mike, uh, I've put together a few things that I'm showing you for the first time. And the theme is the American dream, the American uh -huh. dream. So I want to start with the number of the week, which is 99. Ah, Maxwell Smart's assistant. Or actually, <laughs> sort of a spy partner, yes. Okay, exactly. 99. Well, it's You're got too. a different meaning in You're this too. video, and I'll tell you what it is uh, in just a second. You're too young for my reference, though. You don't remember the television series, uh, Get Smart. but No, I've, yes. I've just heard references to it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so anyways, so our chart of the week, this comes to us uh, from Bloomberg, and they're using Federal Reserve data that came out this week. U.S. household net worth falls on lower stock holdings. So this here is a chart of uh, the change in household net worth. So each bar is the change in household net worth each quarter. And generally it goes up from one quarter to another, but you can see that most recently in Q3, we did have a, a down quarter. Uh, and this is uh, the third quarter decline was the biggest in a year. So what, when you look at this, what do you see, Mike? Uh, well, <clears throat> I see, um... I see that the chart doesn't go back far enough for me. That's what I see. I want to see this going all the way back to 2008 and have some real reference for comparison. That's that's what I see. I'm sort of disappointed in Bloomberg here for putting this is source of the Federal Reserve. The data has to go back further than 2019. Yeah, that's how I feel on uh, on almost every chart I look at. Even if I have 100 years of data, I want 200 years of data. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyways, yeah, um, we can see the first quarter of 2020 uh, in the pandemic. That was a big down yeah. quarter. And then actually two years in a row. So eight quarters in a row of increasing household net worth. And then two down quarters, three up quarters. And then we're down again. Um, the S&P 500, I think, was down about 4% in Q3. Um, mm -hmm. and, and as we know, uh, American households, they own more stocks than they do precious metals. So that, that could be a, a contributing factor here. Right. Yeah. 70% uh, of people do have absolutely, I can't remember, have less than 1%. Uh, it's have no precious metals exposure at all. So yeah, no exposure to real money. <laughs> exactly. So anyways, just a data point to keep in mind. So, okay. So I want to keep moving okay. here and show us the article of the week. Irony alert, the American dream is only affordable overseas. <laughs> <laughs> So, so there is an inescapable irony in the American dream, no longer being affordable in America for the majority of Americans. Definitions vary, of course, but the American dream typically includes being able to obtain higher education, a home, a family, a family enterprise, and some measure of ownership of assets that provide financial security on wages or salaries that are within reach of the bottom 80% of workers. Whew. So put another way, if the American dream is only affordable to those earning $250,000 a year and up, or those who inherit family wealth, it isn't the American dream. So yeah, yeah what do you think, Mike? Uh, I think uh, Charles is absolutely right here. Uh, he's, you know, um, uh, he's a great writer. And uh, I hadn't really looked at this, but he's he absolutely nailed this. Uh, and, you know, this is, also some unique thought. I don't see this coming from a whole bunch of other people. This is, he, he does, uh, Charles Hugh Smith does tend to come up with new original thought here. And this is great. He's, he's absolutely right. Uh, it's been priced out of people's grasp and it's a, a byproduct of our evil monetary system. Yeah, exactly. And one of the lines that really stood out to me is, it seems taboo to say this, but the American dream implicitly includes a goal of no debt no debt. And I mean, really since 1971, the U.S. itself has been a debtor nation instead of a creditor nation. And very soon, American families and, and individuals have followed from everything, you know, student loan debt, home mortgage, medical debt, 
and so forth. Credit cards, everything. It's just debt is getting out of control and we're going the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. So I encourage everyone to check this out. It's a great article. Um, and it relates uh, to our headline of the week. Biden wants to give 500,000 Americans money to buy homes. Well, he can't give them money unless he's going to like open up a precious metals mine. Uh, he, he can only give them currency. And uh, when the government hands out currency to anyone, it's stolen wealth that enslaves. Uh, the government has to go, <clears throat> we're spending more than our income. And whatever that difference is can be made up two ways. Uh, you can either sell a treasury bond to an investor, in which case it's dollars that already exist and they are willingly given up temporarily in a contract and then they're paid back out of taxes and uh, the principal and interest is paid back out of taxes or they can do deficit spending uh, and then the federal reserve can buy that debt there's seven trillion dollars roughly of what the federal reserve has purchased so seven trillion dollars of brand new currency diluting the currency supply stealing wealth from the other units of currency and transferring it to the government so it so that somebody can give away free currency, which is stolen wealth at the point of a gun, uh, to uh, uh, buy votes. So it <laughs> yeah. makes him sound very magnanimous. So. Yeah. You know, when I read this headline, I thought of two things. Um, the first was going back to George Washington, the first president of the country, who, I mean, Allegedly, I wasn't around then, but I've, I've heard stories of him uh, donating his own silver to the U.S. Treasury to help fund government. And this is what I thought of. This is a, a very different uh, way of using yeah. the government. So, uh, well, then, this is uh, the, the reverse Robin Hood uh, thing. Uh, you know, there it's stealing from everybody to do this. Uh, and you're also enslaving uh, future generations through the extra debt that the, I mean, wants to give 500,000 Americans currency to buy homes. Um, <clears throat> did it say how much is going to give each one of these 500,000? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a combination of programs. Um, okay. There's a, there's a whole bunch of ways to, to bring this about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 125 billion, billion in development revenue. Um, there's okay. some tax breaks, uh, things for first time home buyers. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of details here, but it's not necessarily just like a cash layout. Australia has done a lot of this in the past, and it works for a little while until the day that it come, all comes back to haunt you. It comes back with a horrific correction that then everybody wants to blame on the free market when it was the free market being manipulated that caused the warped economy that then when the free market corrects the warp, it happens very, very suddenly, and everybody... Uh, gets very scared. A lot of people lose their wealth. Uh, it's it. The the government has no business doing this kind of crap to the economy that you know is going to cause so, just tremendous damage in the future. Exactly. Yes, that was at the the Australia real estate fiasco was actually the second thing I thought of when I saw this headline. So the first was George Washington. The second was Australia. I remember you pointed out you you wrote a whole bunch about Australia. There was a $7,000 program and then another $7,000 program for $14,000. And all that ended up happening was that the average price of homes went up by $7,000 and then $14,000 within the span of a year or two. And the chart that shows that is just unbelievable. Was that yeah. in your first book or did that end up getting cut? Uh, well, it was in uh, this book, Guide to, I'm sorry, The Great Gold and Silver Rush of the 21st Century. But I don't know if we cut that section out or not. You know, when People don't know that when you write a book, at least for me, um, I wrote, uh, there was enough written to create maybe, what, four of these books, maybe six. Uh, so There's somewhere between 75% and 80% and of the book was cut. Yeah. And this is the 20%, the juicy 20% that is left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we can make a separate video on the uh, Australian real estate uh, in the near future. Yeah. So let me let me keep moving here. Let me bring us back to the number of the week. It was 99. I want to tell you what that is. It's 99% of Americans will be financially worse off than they were pre-pandemic. Okay. That that's in mid-2024, according to JP Morgan. They're predicting that 99% of Americans will be worse off halfway through next year than they were just about three years ago. 
halfway no. through next year. Now, this is interesting because that would they, they could come up with a figure that says like 80 percent or 90 or 94 percent are worse off right now. <laughs> and then there's just this few percent left that are going to be worse off in another, you know, in six months or eight months from now. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They say that most Americans have burned through the majority of excess savings um, and and uh, elder millennials face a particularly tough set of circumstances. And they had a chart here kind of predicting this. And I mean, I, I have some issues with this, but basically they say all the different income groups are trending downwards, having essentially um, negative income. But I don't, I, I think this is a little too bearish. I don't know if I would, I would agree that 99% are going to be this bad off, maybe 80%. I mean, if this yeah. warning line comes up, then the right. top 20% are okay. I mean, there's all kinds of and, things. we You can know, it's there. got the top 1% in there and they're just tr uh, projecting lower. But as this goes lower, the Fed will uh, do their pivot. They'll reverse course. They'll start uh, cutting rates and they'll start uh, QE5. And when they start doing QE, there's a transfer of wealth from the bottom four lines to that top line there. The top 1% will get all the wealth that's stolen from the, the uh, bottom 99, or at least the bottom 90%, uh, uh, loses when the Federal Reserve uh, dilutes the currency supply and steals that wealth that is stored in the currency supply and then uh, spends the brand new currency. Uh, into the financial markets, boosting them up. And you uh, showed stocks at the beginning. Uh, so the people that have their wealth determined by their stock portfolio instead of, uh, you know, the normal things that they're going to get wealthy at the expense of everybody else. And <clears throat> people will just, uh, you know, look at it and say, how did this guy magically get wealthy? Well, you know, I, I would bet that... Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, that uh, three quarters of their wealth was actually a wealth transfer. Uh, you know, they deserve the quarter that they made from working hard and doing uh, new things. But the rest of it is this transfer that, the you know, in the book we show, I can't remember what the correlation was, but it was incredibly high. Whenever the Federal Reserve does QE, if, if the uh quantity of currency is inflated by 20%, the value of the stock market goes up 20%. It's somewhere between like 19.8 and 20.2 uh, or something like that. The correlation was, I, I think it was, um, it was, a, it was north of 97%. Uh, yeah. It was either 97%, 98, 99, depending on the time yeah. period we looked at for the different yeah. QEs. It was darn close to 99 coincidentally. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, yeah, yeah um, just to keep moving here, I want to remind everyone that that all these um, all these stories we looked at today are actually on the gold silver website. Um, so the American dream is over and only affordable overseas. You can check that out. JP Morgan says 99 percent of Americans will be financially worse off by mid 2024. Uh, and a few others are on here. They're they're really great. Uh, <laughs> this one was particularly interesting to me. Central bankers concerned over rising wage trends. So in other words, if, if the average person is, is making more and more money, oh no, the bankers are freaking out. Oh, we can't have that. That's right. going to be bad for the economy. I mean, well, think about it. Their job is to steal from the average person and give it to the wealthy. And if the average person keeps up with everything, I mean, that just means that they got to work harder to steal more. So well, <laughs> the central bankers have to work harder to steal yeah. more yeah. because that is their job is to redistribute wealth and, and, uh, the, this whole thing is just such a, the more you investigate it, the more you learn about it, the more you go, oh my God, how evil is this? Yeah. And it is incredibly evil. It's, we live in this, uh, this and, and unless somebody spends a lot of their time studying this, you don't really get it. Unless you want to read episode, I mean, uh, chapter four, <laughs> of the great gold and silver rush of the 21st century. Sorry to bring it back to the book, but <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. And you know, if the book is too much for people, you don't have that much time to read, just go to our website, scroll down here, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get this stuff right in your inbox. It'll just be a few yeah. minutes a day to read so, the, some of the most important stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. And while you're there, you can get the product of the week, which is the one ounce American silver Eagle coin. I've got one right here. You can get it for as low as $30-ish, you know, depending on the quantity. 
it just feels good in your hand and the central bankers can't take it away from you. Also, it makes a great gift for the holidays. I've given this to many friends and family members, even colleagues over the years. You know, when I first started doing it, it was around $20. Now it's around $30, but it just feels good. And in the past, I've gotten gift certificates to, you know, restaurants and stores that have since gone out of business. And those gift certificates expire worthless. They're worth absolutely nothing. This will always be worth something. And it's a very affordable price point, And it's a great way to get your loved ones into precious metals. Some of them might not have any. And another great gift, by the way, is Mike's book. I can't help but mention <laughs> it. And Mike, I know you have a, an announcement about your book. So what is that? Oh, well, um, you know, we had the Kindle version or the ebook version uh, ready since, I believe, April and the audio book since May. But with the problems that I had on Amazon and them taking away my browse nodes and all of the, the just sheer hell that I went through with them, because it was like dealing with the IRS every day. Uh, but it has it that delayed the release of the uh, the Kindle, and uh, we still don't have the audio book on there for some reason. But the audio book should be there within uh, a week. Uh, but it, it the ebook is there right now. So yeah, awesome. So, so yeah, so, yeah the, the website is ggsr21.com. Mm -hmm. You can go there. Um, yeah, the, and by the way, there is two free chapters. So if you want to try before you buy, check out these chapters. Chapter four is the one Mike was just talking about a second ago. I will caution some readers. It might seem technical, but the rest of the book is not that technical. So if you can right. handle chapter four, you can handle the rest of it. It's written in a way that's accessible for as many people as possible. Don't be intimidated by chapter four. Yeah, read chapter three first. Uh, that one is written in the way the rest of the book is written. And it's fun, entertaining, and short. Uh, chapter four is the longest chapter, and it's the hardest chapter in the book. Yeah. But the reason it's online is because um, we're still working on it. It's got things in it that have to be updated, modified, refined. And uh, uh, so it's something that will evolve. And um, uh, But if you want to understand a little bit about the Federal Reserve, uh, the, there's a little in Chapter 1, but there's a whole lot more in Chapter 4. And it really discusses some of the workings. And that's the reason it seems technical and the reason it's a little bit harder is because this evil monetary system is engineered to be difficult for anybody to understand uh i think it was john kenneth galbraith that said that uh that um the modern monetary system uh is normally uh the complex complexity is used to reveal uh and here it is used to conceal it's it's complex on purpose to try and conceal the inner workings of uh, this wealth transfer that it creates. Exactly. So, yeah. So just a, just a reminder, ggsr21.com, click order book now. It'll take you to the Amazon page. And yes, the Kindle version is available. So yeah, that's it. So um, the, the price on the book, the paper book, that's full color um, at $19. Uh, that's, I'm just trying to, get rid of the inventory right now because uh it was not a good decision to print all of these in color and then uh when amazon uh basically made it almost impossible to sell the book uh by taking away the browse nodes and and all of the uh things that they they changed it to a it was a vi can, listed as a video game so you couldn't find it by searching through books uh if you searched through the category of books, it would eliminate this book from your search. And it was that way for the two months right after the launch. Anyway, uh, so the Kindle is on there. The audio uh, version, will, the audio book will be up very shortly. Uh, but uh, the retail price on the book is uh, 39 bucks. But it, we've, I'm just going to leave it at 19 and try and burn through the... Uh, the inventory and then the color version will never be available again once it is gone. Wow. So get it, get it uh, while you can, folks. And I want to end with the meme of the week. Good morning. Hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm. These puppies, if this is, if riding around with these puppies isn't the American dream, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> Smiling dogs. Uh, I, yes, right. They know how to enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right that's all i got for this week thanks mike thanks everyone for watching
Thank you, Alan. Hi, I just wanted to tell you about Gold Silver's 111 ounce silver giveaway where you can win, 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 one, one, one. One one ounce silver bar, one 10 ounce silver bar, and one 100 ounce silver bar. So enter today and win.